Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Vince Edwards. I'm the Director of Music here at Grace Church in Providence. Uh, so happy to welcome you to the first of our Tuesdays at 10 Linton uh, sort of semi-lecture series or talk series. Uh, just waiting on our guest, uh, Gwyneth Leach, who will be joining me shortly and uh, via Zoom. And just wanted to say, if you are interested in these Tuesdays at 10 or any of our other Linton offerings, please be sure to go to our website, uh, gracechurchprovidence.org, and you can find uh, our Linton brochure and a complete list of all the offerings uh, that we have, uh, Tuesdays at 10, Thursdays at noon concerts, the Friday Stations of the Cross, all of these things are either pre-recorded or live streamed. And beginning tomorrow, uh, beginning, well, this last Sunday, technically, and then continuing through Lent, our 10 a.m. live stream worship on Sundays. Um, so lots, lots that is available to you and, and hope that you will take advantage of these, um, these many offerings that we've worked hard to bring to you virtually and we look forward to the time we can bring them to you in person and you can come here to Grace Church. Uh, we will, of course, like so many places, um, continue to, to offer uh, things uh, virtually and streamed even when we are in person here at uh, Grace uh, and when you can when you can join us join us here. Uh, it's it's uh, I'm so happy about having Gwyneth with us today. She as I say she'll be joining us shortly, uh, and I will uh, introduce her. And we're going to be talking about our Stations of the Cross um, here at Grace, which which are images that Gwyneth painted. Um, so so uh, very exciting. And here comes Gwyneth now. Good morning, Gwyneth. Hello. Hello. So, Gwyneth, I logged on a bit early myself, so I did some of the housekeeping stuff already. While it was just a, a, a shot of me here looking sort of electric <laughs> with my new webcam. Yes. Uh, and so I uh, just was giving some folks some background about our upcoming series, the things that we're offering, both virtu mostly virtually throughout Lent. Um, and, and was reminding them that today was our first of our Tuesdays at 10. Um, we're going to be, one of the things we're offering this, this Lent, and we intended to offer last Lent and, and, and barely began doing before we all had to stop offering things, uh, was Stations of the Cross. And I should just say up front that that's such a, that's a very new thing for Grace Church. Grace Church has historically been, uh, not so much in the last 10 or 20 years, but historically been a very has been what's known as a low church parish, um, a slightly more Protestant uh, leaning. So Stations of the Cross would not have been part of the vocabulary here. And I was so happy when our rector last year um, was open to the idea of, of doing some sort of Stations of the Cross service. And it was largely your, your work that, uh, that piqued his interest and, and I think opened his mind to the idea of doing it. And in the brief, I should say the brief time that we had a couple of live services the reception was amazing. So, so I'm so happy that we're able to do it virtually again. Um, so I wanted to say a word about how Gwyneth and I met and our background. And then we're going to, I'm going to, my goal is to have Gwyneth talk way more than I do. And those of you who know me, that's always a challenge for me, but I will do my very best. Uh, I was the associate director of music at St. Bartholomew's Church uh, starting in 1999. And I believe Gwyneth and her family came to St. Bart's in, to New York in 2000 or shortly around that time. Gwyneth is also a very talented singer and alto and her husband, a talented bass, David. And they became part of the St. Mark's Choir, and we got to know each other, and then ultimately their girls, uh, Grace and Megan. And we have stayed friends ever since, which has been a, a great, great gift. Early on, I discovered that Gwyneth was a painter and invited me, I don't know if you remember Gwyneth, you invited me over for breakfast at your flat one day and uh, cooked me a wonderful sort of English style breakfast and showed me all of these paintings. And I was with bananas. And I, one of the first things I saw was the wonderful Angel of the Annunciation study from St. Mary's Cathedral, Glasgow, which maybe we'll talk about later. Um, anyway, we remain friends. I moved on to Norwalk, Connecticut, to St. Paul's on the Green in 2003. And in 2004, we got the notion to commission new Stations of the Cross. The parish had Stations of the Cross that were most uninteresting and most uninspiring. Uh, and uh, the rector and I began to dream about it. And I mentioned I knew a brilliant artist who I knew had some background with some sacred art. and. And it went from there. Uh, and so that's what brings, that's what brought us together and how we got to talk about this. So Gwyneth, welcome. So happy to have you here to talk about this. Uh, I, what I was calculating how many years ago that conversation was, that was 17 years ago, which is astonishing to me, astonishing. Gwyneth and I were obviously both 12 when, when we had that conversation. 
Um, so I just thought we'd start today. Uh, I wanted to ask you, when, when we first, when I came to you, you knew me. I mean, so hearing from me maybe wasn't that surprising. But when I said, Gwyneth, would you consider painting 14 Stations of the Cross for St. Paul's? What did you think? Well, first of all, let me say thank you, Vince, for reaching out and inviting me to, to talk all about this body of artwork and this commission, uh, which, as you say, 17 years ago. So um, that in itself is pretty terrifying to think about. <laughs> but uh, um, I, I have been, uh, the one thing I do remember extremely vividly about that initial conversation uh, when you called me up to suggest or propose this idea is that I had no idea what the Stations of the Cross were. <laughs> um, I come from a, a low, a low Episcopal background, a church in Philadelphia, went to a Quaker school. Um, we didn't have that iconography um, at all. So I don't know if I actually admitted that to you at the time. I don't know if I said, Vince, honestly, I have no idea what the Stations of the Cross are. I think you did, actually. <laughs> and then I think you gave me a brief kind of rundown of what they are. And then I started to Google and research it. And I actually got really intrigued uh, by several aspects of the Stations of the Cross um, concept. Um, one is that it's a, a pilgrim, pilgrimage route in Jerusalem. So it allows people to walk in the footsteps of Christ um, through the Passion Week uh, and, and from the judgment of Pontius Pilate all the way to the crucifixion. And there are locations associated with each step of that journey along the way. Uh, it turns out some are biblical, some are accretions or medieval. Um, but there are actual way stations and they're numbered uh, 1 through 14. And I think some, perhaps the Episcopal tradition might have included just the biblical ones, 1 through 8. The Catholic tradition has 1 through 14. But there, there are stops along the way. Uh, so if you happen to be fortunate enough to be in Jerusalem during Holy Week, you could, you could do this journey. Uh, and, but in the Middle Ages, obviously, most people couldn't journey to, to Jerusalem. So the Stations of the Cross uh, became a walk, a meditative walk you could do outside or even around a church. And that tradition certainly um, carried through in the Catholic Church. So, so uh, this, this was all quite new to me. And then Vince explained that, and I researched it. And then you invited me to come to, to Norwalk, to St. Paul's on the Green, and to see your existing Stations of the Cross, because um, St. Paul's is a, a higher church than, than I grew up with. And so there were 14 uh, stations in their paintings, and they were all medieval-ish, um, with Roman centurions and people in white robes and very uh, sort of kind of generic churchy, you know, what, what we think of it, this iconography might look like. And I know at the time you were wondering, um, the church wanted new stations of the cross and maybe you were going to go with icons, sort of a, a much more schematic um, or number based or something like that. But Vince, uh, as you mentioned, had, had seen the work that I had done for um, St. Mary's in Glasgow. And um, I could just segue to talk about that for a minute, if that makes sense. This. Yes, but it does, because uh, I should point out, I mentioned that the study of the Angel of the uh, Annunciation that I had seen in your apartment, and then you gave me a, a book, a booklet that had been made around that project, and, and it was, it definitely was your, your, uh, your palette, I guess, your color palette, your style, not that it, we thought it would have to imitate that, but that made us think that this was the artist to do what we were, because we didn't even really know what we wanted to do, we just knew we wanted something different from what we had, so it was very much that your work there that I think made us think, yes, this is the right fit. So yeah, talk about St. Mary's Glasgow. Um, sure, so St. Mary's Glasgow, um, uh, going back very quickly, I grew up in Philadelphia, went to the University of Pennsylvania, and at the end of my senior year, applied for a international traveling fellowship that would let me go to art school, which was my dearest wish. Um, and I was a little bit surprised, but I got that. And I ended up in Edinburgh in Scotland um, where I studied and graduated from Edinburgh College of Art, postgraduate um, studies there, and then moved to Glasgow and lived there for many years. And was um, I got married and sang it in the church at St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral in Glasgow. Um, my husband is a bass, we both sang in that choir. And that church uh, was a very much um, off the peg, Gothic, Victorian Gothic church, 
very stark interior, white walls, uh, dark wood, and uh, in terrible need of repair. And so while we were um, singers in that church, they launched a commission to completely redecorate the interior and they were gonna do all this structural renovation, but they were looking for a scheme of interior decoration involving um, wall colors and maybe murals and all sorts of things. So I put together a concept and proposed it. And I had spent time as an art student in Italy, a very formative period of time in Tuscany. And I was at that time obsessed with Giotto and his color palette. So the color palette of Italian frescoes. Um, and so that was kind of the direction I went with this, with this proposal and they accepted it. So through much of the nineties, I was actually um, painting murals in St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral in Glasgow, um, on and off, up scaffolding, and uh, I got to execute this plan, which was pretty amazing. And one of the things I did in that, in my concept for that, for the murals there, was I um, I contemporized traditional traditional themes. And there's a chapel, and it's a, uh, and it's the uh, the Passion Week in a series of large panels that are, are set in a, an actual public park in Glasgow. Um, and the people walking by are the denizens of Glasgow in, in, the, in, in the 1990s. So it was that work that, that Vince saw. Uh, I did a slideshow also at, at, um, at St. Bart's in New York City when, when I came to be a singer there. And I think, I believe you saw that also. And uh, I think that intrigued you, the idea that um, that palette would fit with the, the Gothic interior of your church at St. Paul's. And also the, I could contemporize some classic iconography. So that, I believe that was the connection that you yeah, had. Yeah, definitely all of that. And, and, and uh, I, I thought um, we should also say that the, the, your study for the triptych, which I believe was in St. Was it St. Anne's Chapel at St. Mary's yeah. Cathedral, right? The, yeah. the triptych, um, which I believe, if my memory serves me, when the original panels were like six by eighteen, they were each they were quite tall, quite large, or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then Gwyneth had a study of that, and and as part of all of our relationship and the stations and everything, the study of that triptych ended up at St. Paul's as well, hanging on over the west doors. Uh, just another marvelous uh, addition to the space. So yes, all of those things contributed to our our interest in in your doing this. I think one of the hardest things maybe for an artist that you might want to talk about this is when somebody it comes to you and says, I want to commission you to do something and we don't really know what we want you to do exactly, <laughs> right? Yes. So maybe say a little bit about that. We had some conversations with Father Lang at the time and, and how we sort of sort of we made our way, both your research and how we made our way into, or you made your way into what shape these things took. Um, yes, yeah, so the conversations are always a very important part of the commissioning process. Um, because I have my skills and talents and the work I've already done and the, the, the body do, who wants to commission the work, they have ideas and it, it really needs to be a marriage of the two or um, it's not going to be successful. Um, it, it always works best, especially when you have a community of people like a church congregation and you really want a high level of buy-in. So uh, lots of conversations and sort of feeling, feeling, feeling the way. And eventually um, I think we all came to be on the same page that the Stations of the Cross could be reimagined in a way that would um, let people feel that passion, uh, passion journey in, in a contemporary manner that, that bridged to the past and that fit with the architecture of the church. So those were the, the, the basic ideas. And um, I don't know if it came from the conversations we had or whether I had the idea myself or maybe it was a mix of these various things that um, I would take traditional iconography from each of those um, parts of the stations, uh, Jesus carrying the cross and the crucifixion and the preparing for the tomb and, and match them with um, images that we were then seeing a lot in print press from the Middle East, because that at that time we were right in the middle of the Iraq war. Um, there were many um, terrorist um, attacks around the world. There was a lot of grief and suffering on display. And 
a lot of those images that we were all seeing um, had uh, such an iconographic feel to them already. Um, they somehow linked really directly to paintings I started to look at in, in the Metropolitan Museum and in the Frick and paintings I knew from my own um, art background. So that was the proposal I made and um, Vince and the clergy at St. Paul's said, okay, uh, I think let's do this. Let's go in that direction. So that's, that's where it went. I think and as we, uh, as we progressed uh, along the way, I remember, um, I mean, fast forwarding a little bit, but I remember Gwyneth, you had done some studies of each, basically of all the stations and posted them in your studio. And uh, you, we, St. Paul's didn't have, it had a, a, the, the high altar window was stained glass. I mean, highly colored stained glass, but the re remainder of windows around the nave were mostly sort of frosted clear diamond pane glass with, with central medallions, which had color. And Gwyneth had taken pictures of all of those medallions sort of and laid those out around the studio in the order they were in the church and then put her station studies between those. And you, you called us and said, I'm, re I'm ready for you to come in and see something. And uh, Nicholas Lang and Ann Watkins and Rodney and I all got in a van and we were, I think we sped all the way to New York because we, we couldn't imagine, I mean, we knew we were going to love it, but we couldn't imagine what we were going to see. Uh, and that's a really cool place to be, knowing you're going to love something, but having no idea what it's going to be. And so we we came up the stairs to your apartment and walked in, and, and I think we collectively all said, yes, yes, this is your, absolutely, you're doing what we couldn't put, you know, put words or images to, but this is what we wanted to see. That was And that was exciting, because it probably isn't always that way with the commission. I would imagine sometimes somebody comes in and goes, well, <laughs> me, sort of, you know, but yeah, we, we were all in. It was, it was, we were clearly on the right, on the right track. So, so when you continued to work on those, I think the, the press, the, the news continued to inspire through the, through the process. Didn't that continue to inform you a bit as we went, as we went along? Um, it did. So there, there was always something new uh, to add depth to the contemporary understanding um, of what we're seeing. And in fact, while I was working on it, um, images came out from Abu Ghraib of, of uh, prisoners being stripped and tortured and threatened with dogs. And it was like, oh no, I mean, this is too much, too much. So some of those images ended up being very directly incorporated um, into the station. So I think it's station number 10. I'm, Sorry, I can't remember specifically, but it's a Jesus stripped of his garments and the dog is there and he's being threatened by soldiers. So um, it got pretty specific um, in those ways and yet um, somehow always tying in with the, the older uh, compositions. Yeah. So we were able to layer that. Um, yeah. So it was, it was actually very emotional, very challenging to do, I think. <clears throat> Uh, I guess that was one of the surprising things about how the process of doing those paintings deepened my empathy for the story, um, and it was it was emotionally draining. Not so it wasn't it wasn't an easy it wasn't an easy thing to do. So to, you made some there were you know the things one of the things and I, I hope um, first of all I, I think when if people can go to your website and still still find the link to see these images is that true. They can, um, uh, I will make them a little more obvious the moment okay. they're, yeah. they're, in, the yeah, they're in the archive time. section, but I will pull them out onto the, onto the basic nav um, so people could see them during Lent, that would be. And that, that website is GwynethLeach.com. GwynethLeach.com, just, yeah. Yeah. Yes. and maybe um, put that up and. Yes, in the we, comment section or something for absolutely. people. <laughs> and we can, be, I would encourage you to go and look at them, especially since this Lent, so many people can't, they're hanging at Grace Church or, or rep representations of the images, which Gwyneth has kindly licensed us to do. Um, but but I would encourage you, you know, if you're watching this uh, to before and after, be sure to go and look at the images because you can see them quite quite closely. They, the thing, one of the things that struck me was that they were at once uh, traditional and totally contemporary, uh, which I think, I mean, I'm not an artist, I think that would be really hard to do because we, we, didn't, we didn't want images that were shocking, and I mean shocking from a standpoint of like uh, non-representational, you know, like Jesus as a triangle sort of thing. I mean, not that that couldn't be a way to go, but that wasn't what we were after, but we did want uh, almost shocking in, in its contemporary um, 
uh, nature so that it would draw people in. Father Lang very much wanted people to be pulled to the wall to see these and not just say, oh, Stations of the Cross, you know, I, I know what those do. Uh, and so they, these stations, in my opinion, did that like 110%. But you made some decisions, Gwyneth, along the way, uh, and I'll just mention a couple if you would talk about them, like the way Jesus was represented, the way the soldiers were dressed, things like that. Who, who appeared? Who were the other people that appeared? Did you say a little bit about some of those things? Um, yeah, so there, because I was pulling this from a lot of different source material, um, the iconography was shifting a bit from panel to panel. Jesus seemed to be a different person, um, not so much like a cartoon strip where you have the same character repeated again and again. Um, but the the placement was a little different. So um, at some points there was a background of, of uh, people in a ruined city from an imagery from Iraq or there the women of Jerusalem in this this cycle are represented by refugee women of Darfur and be, behind a white thorn fence. Um, and then at, at certain point, there's um, at the foot of the crucifixion, there um, American family grieving the loss of a, a soldier and Iraqi uh, families grieving the loss of their, their family members. So it kind of ranges and I let the figures and also the figure of Jesus look different from, from panel to panel and instead of trying to rein that in and create one single character. So I wanted all kinds of different people to be able to connect to it, to relate to it. Yeah. Um, and, and that was, and I'm glad that the St. Paul's were, that they, that they were okay with that and said, yes, um, they weren't interested in going with the traditional Eurocentric, um, Jesus is white kind of idea. So he's a uh, many different kind of men. So that's the, the idea that Jesus is among us um, in crowds of immigrants um, at the border or in crowds of refugees uh, fleeing war or in, um, in protest movements. And yes, so I, I, one of the interesting things to me is, is how these paintings still somehow are relevant. I remember a conversation at the time um, with you, Vince, thinking, we were thinking, well, the Iraq war will end and maybe these Stations of the Cross won't resonate so much anymore. Um, but somehow they seem to keep, keep referencing contemporary events. And you did, you did ask me about uh, soldiers. So instead of Roman centurions, I, I, I made the choice to um, represent militaries and militias and different different groups. And there's nothing specific, no specific army though it was happening during the Iraq war. So some people took that as a direct uh, criticism of the US involvement in Iraq and that caused some consternation and negative press at the time. But I had um, explicitly um, chosen military uniforms that were not contemporary and guns that were not contemporary, but it was enough for some people to feel a little aggravated by that. Right. Um, well, and while they, while they weren't contemporary as of the day, they were more contemporary than what we normally like by the fact that there were guns as opposed to spears, uh, you know, right. but didn't one of your discoveries that I found amazing is that I believe, if I remember that when you were doing your research that so much of the setting that we think of as ancient was contemporary when it was done. Is that, is that yes. fair to say? Yes. And I, I've always loved those paintings from, from the Renaissance on where they updated the story and set it in their own contemporaneous um, city or town or garment. Yeah. You know, from, right. you know, Giotto was doing that. He was doing that with perspective for the first time. That was, um, the, they had moved away from the flat iconography of, of the, the Byzantine. And suddenly you had, um, architectural spaces. And then as you go into the high Renaissance and into the Middle Ages, you see these wonderful paintings of people wearing their the robes of their day and in the background are their cities. Um, sitting on a hill is, is whatever the local, local city was. So I've always loved that. And, and even though many people have come to think of that as the suitable way to paint sacred 
iconography, you just have to remember artists have been updating these stories forever. Yeah, right. Well, you, I had a, I was so fortunate to be part of, I mean, to, to witness some of this, but one of the things I remember particularly sort of in reference to what you're saying now, um, when, when Gwyneth brought the stations, the actual paintings, which uh, were, they're oil on board, is that correct? They're wood board. panels, they're Literally. oak, oak okay. panels that are. Yeah, uh, yeah. and they, and we, we had prepared for the hanging of them. And so she got them in place and you spent about a week, I think at St. Paul's doing some, some slight touches and adding some things. And, and I remember Gwyneth, particularly about the crucifixion, you had not put a crown of thorns on the crucified Christ. I, I think partly because your research had pointed out that, that that was a relatively later edition, relatively later edition. That wasn't always the case. But and and I was there when you were thinking out loud about this. I was sort of standing back watching and all. But just that's a specific thing. But maybe just talk a little bit about that and, and, and what you decided to do in the end, which, you know, was, I thought, amazing. Again, it made it traditional, but it made it completely new and contemporary in a way. Um, yes, I, I had made that decision about the crown of thorns um and in the end i i introduced that idea um as a tangle or a rope of barbed wires that goes around the foot of the cross so i referenced the idea of the crown of thorns um but in a more contemporary way so many of the paintings have barbed fences of various kinds like the one the image from Darfur it's a, a, a fence of white thorns um, but he's often walking by a scene that has a barbed wire fence of some sort so I wrapped that around the foot of the cross uh, so I took I took those liberties but again the artists have represented this this material in so many different ways um, I think I wanted just to figure to to go with the way that would most, as you said, most pull people in. Yeah. And so in their journey around the church, they're walking, uh, you, you, I think the idea is that they should feel um, that they're walking in the footsteps of, of Jesus, of Jesus as a man who is alone uh, carrying this cross as he walks. And and you want people to to relate to those steps along the way. And in this group of paintings, you're also kind of making a a world tour of contemporary grief. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's that's a great way to say it. I I I I can witness, and I won't make Gwyneth say because she's she's modest, but I I can say how they were received, which was it, they were instantly regarded as part of the architecture of the church. Instantly. I, I don't think I heard one person ever and maybe somebody said and didn't tell me but in general mostly what people came in was it was as if they had always been meant to be there so i would which i would think would be a, a supreme compliment to somebody who's adding architecture to a to an old church building a, an arguably only about a hundred year old building but was built in the style of the 13th century church it's supposed to look like it's been there forever and ever <laughs> because of deferred maintenance it did look like it'd been there forever and ever um so I think instantly the congregation's reaction was, was palpable, uh, both from a, a spiritual standpoint and what it meant to people, but also from an artistic standpoint and embracing it. People within, you know, within a month, people were talking about, you know, our stations of the cross as if they had been there forever and ever and always. Nobody remembered what was there before. Um, and so uh, there was an extraordinarily positive reaction. Uh, it, we did hear, though, when from around the country and around the world, we had we heard certainly more positive reactions, but but we got some that were not so much. Um, you, you alluded to that. And, and, and maybe if we talk a little about that, but segue into their continued interest in them. To, to yes. Um, yeah, the, the negative reactions were coming from the blogosphere, which was much more, the blogosphere was more significant than it is now. Uh, that was a bit before. Um, Facebook and, and all had really taken wow. off, but people were writing lengthy debates and uh, and some people excoriated this. It was political in the sense that uh, you, you had to be all in on the war with Iraq. Um, you couldn't, um, and there was a certain amount of dehumanization that was going on of, uh, um, of people of, of, of Islam and people in the Middle East. And obviously that's a debate that continues um, within our society, but at that time it was pretty, 
it was it was not okay to be to, to be critical of of the occupation of Iraq in any way or of Afghanistan. So um, I did take everybody out on a limb with me, <laughs> but uh, but St. Paul's knew what they were getting in for. So <laughs> um, I think for probably a year or maybe a bit more, you were fielding press inquiries and there was like a, an avalanche of articles and debates in the local press and um, it kind of went on and on. And then, you know, everybody's feelings began to shift about that war in Iraq. Yep. So, and, and we moved away from um, demonizing um, the people who were there. So became more sympathetic to the plight of refugees. And, um, and that, that story continues. It only gets more and more complicated um, as, you know, the climate change uh, makes more places difficult to inhabit. There are more people on the move. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what people respond to still today is that, that feeling of um, suffering and displacement and dislocation and that's happening around the world. And every year I get a number of requests to use the Stations of the Cross uh, in church services. And they've come from, they've come from all over the US, they've come from around the world. And people stream, download the images that, you know, they ask me and I um, always try to say yes. <laughs> and they use them for church services and maybe they do a video service or they print them and hang them in their church. Um, so it's it's been an interesting ongoing journey. Yeah. Uh, this is probably a really uh, uh, an unfair question, but it's one I, I think I've never actually asked you and like to ask you. Do you have a favorite one, either from an artistic standpoint or, or a spiritual standpoint or, or both or either? Is there one that stood out to you, both as process or result or? You know, my, my feelings about them change as as I change and, and go through my life and circumstances change. Um, and the one, that, the one that keeps coming into my mind most recently over this COVID period uh, where people are so isolated um, is the last one, station 14, where Jesus's body is being prepared for burial and he's surrounded by close friends and they're, they're holding the body, they're touching the body um, and grieving there. And that really strikes me um, at this time when that can't happen, when so many people are dying alone and their loved ones can't be there. So. Gosh, yeah. yeah. What a gift though, that, what, a, what a gift. Um, Gwyneth, that you have, I mean, probably all of your work, but, but you certainly will know, you certainly can know and be assured this work continues to be relevant to people. Uh, it reinvents itself, or, or perhaps maybe we reinvent ourselves and it, and it just abides and we keep seeing ourselves in it. Like what you just said is, I mean, so beautiful. I hadn't even thought about that. Um, and how, what, what a gift to that parish and really beyond, thank goodness for, for images so people can see them even if you can't get to St. Paul's on the Green in Norwalk. Um, but it's been, it, it, I still say to people, so you know, that doing that project with you and being part of that was, will always go down as one of the greatest things I've ever been able to be part of. And I'm so grateful for, for being able to be part of that with you. Um, and, and, and also to, for you to license them to other people like Grace Church. Uh, and so, you know, again, just to remind people every Friday, we're, we're doing a live stream walking around Grace Church where these images are, are uh, you know, we've printed them uh, on high quality paper and we frame them and, and we hang them and they're on the columns around the church and we put them up just for Lent. You know, they're not a permanent installation that, that belongs to St. Paul's. Um, but to be able to bring them to people here and, and see people's reaction is, is so powerful. Uh, Gwyneth, before before I let you go, though, I would love it if you just take one minute. I didn't put this on our question list. Gwyneth is a very versatile artist, and and I'm going to name three things. If you just say a quick word about <laughs> coffee cups, uh, families, and uh, construction of buildings, amazing Gwyneth's <laughs> range of work. Just say, would you just say a word about each of those things that have been part okay. of your career? Okay, so actually, I'll talk. I'll start with families because the families project that, uh, that Vince is asking about, um, I did immediately after doing the Stations of the Cross. As I said, I was 
emotionally drained by by taking this journey to of darkest grief. And of course, the Stations of the Cross ends at the tomb. So being totally immersed in the Stations of the Cross, you don't get to resurrection. <laughs> so that that's pretty challenging. Um, so I I had this very strong desire to um, segue to something more um, emotionally positive, but doing the stations and the iconography, I had um, been thinking about the the family, Jesus's family of friends that were there for him at the end. I think that was such a powerful thing. The that's really you know the, the crucifixion and then taking the body down, preparing for burial. Those those three panels. Um, who, who's there at the foot of the cross? You know, so many people ran away and left him, but there's a few people who stay and they form this family in their grief um, and claim the body and prepare it for burial. That, that was just so, so profound for me when I was working on that, that series. So I was thinking about how families are formed, what families are, and, and at that time, um, my second daughter was, had, uh, she was born in 2003. So she was a baby and then up to two years old when I was working on this um, series. And she was born with Down syndrome. And there, for us, there was a lot of fear of the unknown with that. We didn't know what Down syndrome was and we were afraid she would be rejected. Uh, but our community here in um, Hell's Kitchen in New York City were very welcoming and embraced us. And I learned so much more about the families surrounding us. We were, in a baby group and then pre-K. And I realized there were so many um, blended families of different kinds and children who'd been adopted trans, transnationally and mixed race families. And I wanted to do something to, to celebrate that and create the celebrate this community that had welcomed us um, so wholeheartedly. So I did a series of paintings of all these friends of mine with their children. And, and that was, delightful and it went on for quite a number of years and the work uh, was exhibited in New York City and then went to University Museum and then I showed it in um, all sorts of community types of places and now almost all those paintings are with the families that I represented. Okay. So that was a wonderful project and then um, as, as Grace became, um, you know, she was at school and um, my older daughter was at school and I had, it was a challenge to get to a studio. I actually began to make a lot of artwork on coffee cups, which I discovered paper coffee cups were really great to draw on. And that led to another lengthy body of work that was all about art on coffee cups because it was always there, it was always handy. Um, if I couldn't get to the studio, I could make art on coffee cups and it was a bit of a hobby at first, but then it became an obsession. <laughs> and I eventually started exhibiting that work um, and it had portraits of people on the cups, but also uh, abstracts and nature things and architecture. I'll get my examples. Keep talking. I'll get my examples. And he's going to get, he has some. So, um, and there was, yes, yeah, so that, that became a, a major obsession. And I started to show them in windows and chop windows. And there were more and more of them. Eventually, uh -huh. eventually I did over a thousand the biggest exhibition I did in a window in Grand Rapids, Michigan was a thousand and one coffee cup stories, like a thousand and one nights. And on the bottom, I would write the date and who I was with and such. And then anthropology uh, connected with me and we did a series in ceramic and that's what Vince is showing you there. This is an infomercial. Not really because they did a limited run and they're all, they're all gone. Sometimes I see them on eBay at some elevated price and I go, well, okay, that's nice. <laughs> um, but there was a lot of a lot of architecture on them. Now Vince, show them that one. Yes. So this is significant because I was doing more and more cityscapes and architecture on on these cups. And that's the view from my studio window in New York City with the water towers, um, which I love. And then uh, they built a building right outside that studio window in um, 2015 and at first I was drawing the construction on my coffee cups and then I realized they were too small and I was going to have to go bigger so I started using sheets of paper that got bigger and bigger and then I was like okay I have to do canvases now 
And that's how I got back to painting. Uh, so I had, you know, did the Stations of the Cross, the family portraits, long detour into coffee cups, and then back to painting in 2015. And I documented that building going up um, thoroughly. So several years of painting out my window, and then I was just totally sold on that subject matter. So now I'm obsessed with construction and that's ongoing. And I go around the city. Um, before COVID, I was going around the city with easel and, and painting. Uh, and so I'll just say a very brief word about my newest body of work, which is more COVID related. Um, it's still construction, still architecture, still my neighborhood in New York City. Uh, but one of the things that's been happening is the, the city is allowing um, encampments to, to sort of take play, take root in, in this Hell's Kitchen neighborhood. There's some sidewalks that are the property of Port Authority around the back of um, Port Authority bus station. And quite a number of people are building structures, um, tents and cardboard box houses and all sorts of crazy things and the city is not taking them away. So I think this has to do with the large increase in people experiencing homelessness, um, mental illness and the closing of drop-in centers and outreach programs. There are people just living on the street. So that is my current focus. Um, and uh, again, I'm back into a place which is emotionally devastating to, to look at this and include it in my artwork, but also getting to know some of these people and trying to figure out, um, you know, what, what I could contribute um, and who's, who's working with them. And so I'm on a journey at the moment, a new journey of educating myself and, and making this artwork that, that might help educate other people. So it never ends, Vince. No, I well, it doesn't. But when you're when you have a keen mind and a great talent, and you continue to look for ways to use it, of course, it doesn't end. And, and it sounds very roller coastery. But we all know that roller coasters are great because you get a little rest and then you get a thrill. So you know that it sounds a little bit like that. And uh, speaking of thrill, I should just also say one of the other great things I got to do was in 2010, the St. Paul's Choir went to uh, Edinburgh and sang at St. Mary's in Edinburgh for a week, but we got to go sing an even song at St. Mary's Glasgow. And I actually got to stand under all of Gwyneth's work that I had seen in pictures all of those years with my own choir and, and, and Fricky Walker smiling along there with us and, and be surrounded by your work. That was just, uh, it was really an amazing thing. It's been, it's been such a great journey, Gwyneth, knowing you uh, as a musician, as an artist, as in a friend, knowing your family. And, uh, and I'm so grateful for you taking this time. And I, I hope it will draw folks into our Friday virtual Stations of the Cross. And then ultimately, when the time is right and safe, maybe they can see them in person again. Um, but we really thank you for, for all you've done. And uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we can get you here to Grace Church to talk in person sometime, which would be great. We'd love to. I love that. Time. I'd love that. And overdue a visit to see you there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be um, I'm going to go now and... Uh, pull the Stations of the Cross out of their archive and put them on my home nav. So people go to can go to GwynethLeach.com. So I put it in the and, chat. And check them out. Yep. And uh, thank you, Vince, for um, giving me the, this opportunity to remember <laughs> and revisit. And I have to say, I now know what the Stations of the Cross are. <laughs> I believe you could tell somebody if they ask you. <laughs> yes, I Thank can. you, Gwyneth. Take okay. good care. Bye-bye. Have a great day.